My name is Luke Lawrenson, and I am the director and cinematographer of A Still Small Voice, which is in the documentary competition at Camry Lodge. Hi, it's Chaplain Margaret calling. Is now a good time? Yeah, I remember. I have your number saved. Mm. What do you believe, like, happens after death? The film follows Mati over the course of a year-long residency. She starts the residency straight out of Divinity School and is thrown into a gigantic New York City hospital during this global pandemic and is tasked with learning how to walk into the road and provide some type of meaningful emotional and spiritual care. The starting point for A Still Small Voice was actually my sister who has done a lot of work as a hospital chaplain and was the one to really pull back the curtain and show me what the work entails. And it was something that I started to research much more deeply at the start of the pandemic. After a bunch of research, I discovered Amy Strano, who's the director of spiritual care at Mount Sinai, it opened their doors to me for a full year of production. I shot about 150 days. Once I was set up in the department, it was still many months of figuring out how to most meaningfully document these conversations. The film itself is intending to be immersive, giving you the experience of just being there in the room, listening, and not using score or interview or really any sort of device to, to construct the experience other than observation. Again, wanted the experience of the film to be a deeply present one, where you, as an audience member, are not thinking about the camera work, the sound design. I wanted that technical side of the project to sort of get out of the way so that you are, you are really deeply connected to the people on screen. And what that led to was very still, very clean camera work and really a film that is visually, for me, about faces, really learning how to frame the human face in a way that draws you right into the person speaking. Swallows are, are so chaotic and not clean in some ways in terms of all of the things happening. In terms of the geometry, yeah, that, that was sort of the next step. The architecture of Mount Sinai is really quite beautiful. I think it's a really wonderfully designed hospital. The main atrium is almost like a cathedral with tons of light pouring in. I don't know how much you want to nerd out on the lighting of it all. Please. There. Each patient room had a few different lighting sources that were identical throughout the whole hospital. So over many months of shooting, I was able to learn what I could control and what I couldn't. The intention was was not to be invisible, but to be deeply invited. And I never intended for my camera or my presence to have zero effect on the people I was filming, but for that effect to be caring and positive and in touch with what Mati, the chaplain, was intending to deliver. It, spiritual care, especially Mati's spiritual care, is very premised on this idea of loving attention, like really telling somebody you're there, you're listening. I ended up shooting the film on an Amira with uh, an ingenue 28 to 76 same lens, which was a very large rig for a documentary, but I think communicated a sense of importance. The real aesthetic backbone to the film goes back to this idea of wanting the audience to just feel present. And what that led to was deeply trusting the material was enough. It didn't need to be over-edited. It didn't need to be overly creative in terms of how it was shot, but rather clean and left alone. Because if I think about all the things that I've been through, I lived through every single one, so it's not my time. Mm. 
And that's how I look at it, and I find my joy.